before we focus our attention this morning on the Gospel of Luke, let me just take our time to say good morning to everybody. It's so good to see each and every one of you this morning. And it is a privilege and an honor to be able to stand in the house of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He welcomes us all to come to him. Just like the song they just sang, Come ye all who are poor and needy. There's an interesting line in there. It says that if we wait, if we tarry till we make things better, it's, we'll never come at all. So we ought to come while we can. Mm, that's a good message in itself. This morning, let us focus now our attention to Luke 13, verses 1 through 9. You know, last week, we talked about the ministry of reconciliation. And we learned last week that God does not turn his back on us, but that it is us who turn our backs on God. We were challenged last week to take inventory of our lives. We were challenged to see if there be anything causing us to be separated from God or causing us to turn our backs on God. And our text this morning stands on the fact that we are to repent or perish. Why? Because we find at the end of Luke chapter 12, we find that it lets us know that it is a fearful thing to die without reconciliation. In other words, it's a fearful thing to die without having a renewed and restored relationship with God. And this morning, I want to talk to you about turning back to God. This message, no doubt, it is a direct message. It is a message of choice and a message of consequence. One translation communicates this message to its audience by saying, unless you return to God, you will die. And I stand before you today in hopes to encourage us all that if we have strayed away, if we have turned our backs on God, and if we have not lived up to what God requires of us, I say to all of us this morning, let us turn back to God. And as we walk through the first nine verses of Luke chapter 13, one of the things we see is the warning of sin. Christ, he preaches the repentance upon the punishment of the Galileans. Christ, he preaches repentance of sin. Why? Because he does not want us to be separated from him. Do you not know that it is his desire that we all would be saved? And because he desires for us to be saved, 
and to be in fellowship and in relationship with him, he warns us of our shortcomings. The text says there, present at that season, some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answering said unto them, suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things. He says, I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Or those 18 upon whom the tower in Siloam fell and slayed them, think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you nay, but unless ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. And here we can see that Christ warns them of sin. He says, except ye repent, ye shall likewise perish. And that warning is the same warning that Christ extends to us today, saying to us, except we repent, we shall perish. How many of you this morning know that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God, it is what? Eternal life. And so here, he is warning them of sin. But not only does he warn them, but he also tells a parable to show the wastefulness of sin and to show that he provides a chance for a way out of sin. The parable of the fruitless fig tree he speaks this parable and says, a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came and sought fruit their own and found none. And then said he unto the dresser of, the, of this vineyard, behold, these three years I've come seeking fruit on this fig tree and found none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it? Meaning, why use up or waste the ground? And he answering, said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year. Also, till I shall dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit, well and good. And if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. This parable is intended to enforce the word of warning that comes before it. Except ye repent, ye shall likewise perish. Except we be reformed we will be ruined as the bearing tree, except it bring forth fruit, it will be cut down. And I want you to note this morning that the fig tree was considered as a symbol of prosperity. The pear-shaped fruit of the fig tree, it is said that the spices sent into Canaan brought back figs to show the, the, the bounty of the land. 
In other words, it showed the yielding of the harvest and the value of its content. And Matthew 7 lets us know that they shall know us by the fruit that we bear. Mm -mm. But the parable in our reading today, it does not talk about yielding a harvest. But it addresses the fact that the tree yields no fruit. It indicates the wastefulness of sin. This parable teaches that the Jewish people, the chosen people of God, has failed in their mission as God's special people. And I had to pause right here and ask myself a very important question. And that question being, have we as the people of God, have we failed in our mission? Are we failing to share God's word? Are we failing to share the good news of Jesus Christ? Are we failing to tell the redemption story and to live our lives according to the will and the purpose that God has for us? Have we? As the church of today, have we failed to be what God intended for us to be? Are we failing to do what God has intended us to do? Here's the question. Are we yielding any fruit or are we wasting the soil that we have been planted in? Hmm. It's something to think about. It's something that should challenge us to take inventory of our lives. Verse 7, the text says, For three years I have come to this tree expecting fruit and have found nothing. Cut it down. And you know, it's sad to say that we can be planted in good soil, but yet and still, we produce no fruit. Mm. It's sad to say that there are people all across America who have been going to church 20 30, some 50 years, planted in good soil, but they produce no fruit. In church, all of our lives, but we fail to have a relationship with the Savior. Yes, it's a tragedy, and it is a Dangerous thing to lie in the wastefulness of sin. Thank you, Jesus. But I don't want to leave you right there. I don't want to leave you right there in sin to waste away. The good news of this text is that God allows us the opportunity to turn back to him. It's right there in verse 8 and 9. It says, And he answering, saying unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it. One translation says, Lord, give it another year. Meaning, give it a little more time so that I might dig around it and fertilize it, and maybe it will produce next year. 
Mm. And if it bear fruit, well and good. And if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. This lets us know that God is gracious to give us another chance. God is gracious to give us another chance to turn back to him. And I don't know about you this morning, but I'm so glad that he gave me another chance. Anybody other than me glad that God gave you another chance? Another chance to get it right. Another chance to turn back to God. You know, I'm reminded of a, of a story. It's the story of the two thieves that hang on the cross, hung there with Jesus as he hung on the cross. It says that one of the male factors, which were hanging there with him, saying, If thou be Christ, Save thyself and save us. But the other thief answering rebuked him, saying, Does it not thou fear God, seeing that thou art in the same condemn condemnation? We indeed do justice and do need to receive the reward of our deeds. In other words, they're saying we deserve the punishment that's coming to us. He says, but not this man talking about Jesus. He says, not Jesus because he has done nothing wrong. And can you see them hanging there on the cross? And, and the thief says to Jesus, he says, and Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus, hanging on the cross, he, he says to that thief, he says, Today I say to you that ye shall be with me in paradise. And I'm here to let somebody know this morning that as long as there is life, there is another chance. As long as you have breath in your body and as long as the blood is running warm in your vein, you have another chance to get it right and turn back to God. Oh, that's a reason to rejoice. But maybe you can't relate to that story. Maybe you've never been at the point of death and God gave you another opportunity to live again. Maybe you can relate better with the prodigal son. The prodigal son paints a perfect picture of a child returning to his father. You know the story of the prodigal son. Here we have this son. He goes to his father. And he asks his father to give him the inheritance that is due to him. And the father, no doubt, gives the son his inheritance. And so the son, with his inheritance, he sets out to, to explore the world. And while he's out there exploring the world, the Bible says that a famine came. And the son, while exploring the world, he wasted all of his inheritance. 
And in the midst of exploring the world, he's wasted his inheritance. And now here's a famine in the land, and the son finds himself in want. And the Bible says that he goes and he attaches himself to one of the countrymen of the region. And it says that he takes the son of this father and he places him out in the field to feed his swine. And while he's out there feeding the swine, the Bible says that the son comes to himself. And when he comes to himself, he says, I will arise and go back to my father. And he gets up and he journeys back to the father. And the Bible lets us know that when he gets afar off from the father, yet the father sees him coming. And that right there is an indication to me that the father was watching and expecting for him to come home. Mm. And as he sees him afar off, the Bible says that the father goes out and meets him with open arms. And that lets me know this morning that through and by the grace of God, God will embrace us and receive us if we make up our mind to turn back to him. Ah, uh, that's good news. That's good news. And maybe there's somebody here today, you may feel that you are at a, po a point of no return. But I want to let you know that you have another chance to get it right. You have another chance to turn back to the Father, and he is gracious to receive you. Hallelujah. And you know, I cannot extend this message without extending to you the altar, the chance of salvation. And so that may be one here today. Maybe God has been pulling at your heart. Maybe there's something in the mist that has caused a separation. And I invite you today to come. Turn back to God. And if you would turn back to him, we see in the text that he is gracious to receive us. And maybe after hearing this invitation, maybe if you don't come now, I want to let you know that after service, you can come and connect with the prayer partner. And they will pray with you and help you and lead you into salvation. God is good. He is gracious. And he will receive us with open arms. May God bless you. And may heaven smile upon you.